Hey everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, subscribe, bell notification, video, thumbs up. Um, I have plans for January. Um, I'm not totally sure how many of these I will get through. I am going on holidays starting January 22nd, but it is not a staycation. I am flying to Ontario and going to be doing some visiting and traveling in Ontario and Quebec. So I'm hoping I can get a good chunk of these done, but I also just tried to limit what my month's TBR was. So right off the bat, I am so excited. I have it pre-ordered. I have my audiobook on hold at my library as well. I am hoping to pick up Love Boat Taipei as soon as it comes out. It's supposed to be a blurb that's like, for fans of Crazy Rich Asians, and I have been like trying to find something that got to me the way Crazy Rich Asians did. And this sounds like it could potentially. Um, so the main character is an underachieving Asian American so her family sends her to um, somewhere in Asia I can't remember off the top of my head is it Thailand um, but there's a bunch of it's supposed to be like a school where she's supposed to like sharpen her skills and then shows up and like it's like <laughs> it's like known locally as like the place people go and like hook up so <laughs> it sounds like it could be a lot of fun and um, I love the cover of this too I love it and it's a debut Asian author own voices so I'm really excited then I'm going to do a reread of Blood Air. You might be asking, but you just read it in December. Yes. Um, and then I found out the author is going to be in the TBR and Beyond group. Uh, she's coming for a live chat. I am so excited for that. Um, and like I said before, I kind of wanted to reread this um, not using the audiobook because I don't really like the narrator. So I'm hoping to reread it without the audiobook. Um, even if I'm, if I'm traveling, I don't know if I'll be on during the live chat necessarily but I will definitely go back and watch it and I really want to read this without the audiobook really 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 badly. I'm also picking up Winterwood by Shay Earnshaw not too far actually actually since it came out um but this is Shay Earnshaw's um new book new standalone after the Wicked Deep which was like crazy popular because it was so good um we're also reading this for the TBR and Beyond group I just loved the Wicked Deep so much I have three copies of it and I'm really excited for this everyone that has read it seems to just been like it's on par with the Wicked Deep which I'm so happy to keep hearing that so I'm really really excited to read this I have been hearing nothing but praise for Grace Year by Kim Legette since like it got a cover and arcs were going around. Um, everyone just seems to be absolutely loving it. It's supposed to be a little bit in the um, kind of guise, a little bit of the Handmaid's Tale. I'm also kind of super hyped. It's um, hyped. It's blurred by Libba Bray and the fourth book in the Diviner series, The Crow, uh, King of Crows is supposed to come out in f early February, I think it is. I'm so excited for that. Um, I, I'm just really excited. I know it's not supposed to be an easy read and it sounds very dark, but like women are sent to this like island at the age of 16 or whatever for like a year of like magic or they have to become like basically like forced into like marriage or something like that. It sounds very messed up, um, but I'm really excited to read this and my friend Haley will be really excited too because she just absolutely loves this. I'm also going to be picking up A River of Royal Blood. I waited like a month plus after release for them, our libraries to finally get catalog and then send the book out through interlibrary loans. I was first in line. So this is Amanda Joy's debut. It's Black Owned Voices. I'm really excited. I honestly don't remember a ton about it. it's just a fantasy and there's blood magic. I've also been noticing a lot books recently like coming out with magic spelt with a CK at the end. I don't know why. It just sounds real bougie and I kind of like it. Um, but just magic of marrow and blood a rare gift held most notably by the first human queen of mire and continued through her line it is almost it is also the most fearsome despite a court known to exalt the strength of its monarch the gruesome practices of this magic have made it a subject of whispers and for its users shame this is not this is unsurprising power has always inspired fear um i'm just really curious about it it's blurred by natasha yang who i've read girls of paper and fire once and it was okay everyone freaked out about it i was just like this is okay um I'm gonna give that one another go but I'm really excited about this I just know there's like a 16 year old with magical powers I cried kind of when this cover came out it's so beautiful and I'm really excited to read this I also got Anya and the, the Dragon by Sophia Pas Pasternak they released the cover for the sequel I didn't know it was a sequel like that it was a series I thought it was just a standalone um that's like ah man I really need to get this um whoever destroys a single life has destroyed the entire world don't stand out that's what Anya ba Babush Babushka has always told her Anya's Babushka is that grandmother keep to yourself and don't cause trouble but their family is about to lose their home and Anya isn't about to stand around and do nothing her best option is working with the SARS henchman <clears throat> 
Oh my god. Who offer an easy bargain. Money in exchange for helping them capture a dragon, which Anya isn't totally sure even exists. With magic on her side, this seems like a pretty easy deal, but in the tale of mayhem and magic, other fantastical creatures abound, and two uh, as do tyrannical rulers, violent vikings, and Russian folklore. This has so many elements that I when I remember first reading this, I was like, hold on. There's Vikings and Russians and dragons? How is what um and i also love this uh one of my friends actually in high school was named onion i've never actually really read a book with that name so that just made me really excited i love this cover too so i'm really really excited to read this it's probably going to be the one of the first few i read in, in in january i am also excited to be picking up ember and the ice dragons by heather fawcett this is her middle grade series even the one audible for some reason it's listed as the third book in the even the darkest stars duology i don't know what audible is doing with itself but i just know that a bunch of people have been curious about it and been like has anyone read it i really like the under dust jacket too it's just like really cute like baby blue and like everyone's like no I'm waiting to hear what everyone else thinks of it so I was like fine okay I'll take the top the plunge so Ember St. George is a dragon which Ember is probably the coolest name to give a dragon I don't know how I haven't read that before um I'm just really excited I loved even the darkest star series and I can't wait for what else she has come out and I'm really excited to read this it's also got like a hella cute cover. I'm also going to get to Lady Rogue by Jen Bennett. Everyone I know that has read this seems to have read it in a single sitting, but they're all also fans of Jen Bennett's um, contemporary stuff. I've never read any of her stuff before. I hope it's good. I know it's supposed to be um, like Vlad the Impaler kind of messing with of it, um, which I'm not totally sure how someone in contemporary romances can do that, but I mean, I'm sure they can do it. Just it's a very big shift. So I'm really excited. Plus it has a really pretty cover. So um, I hope I like it. It's probably, again, one that I'll probably read earlier on in the month. I'm going to be doing a, a reread of Descendant of the Crane. First of all, because you didn't see that. First of all, because I love this book and it didn't get enough praise. A publisher like made sure that it didn't do well selling wise too. Um, I really need a sequel, but also they finally released the audiobook for it. And I wanted to know how to pronounce a lot of these characters names properly. They finally released the audiobook so I can learn that. So I'm really excited to give this a, another read and just try and again, make more people buy it so that we can get a sequel because I really, really, really need a sequel. My arc of the month, I wanted to make sure I was reading at least one arc each month to try and get deal with my back catalog, um, was Race to the Sun by Rebecca Roanhorse. This was supposed to come out, I think in October, but they pushed it a little bit to be coming out in January. Rebecca Roanhorse is the author who wrote the Trail of Lightning, um, the Sixth World series. Um, I think the first two of those series are out there's supposed to be four total and she also has another series that's supposed to be starting in 2020 I don't know if it's ever if it's actually going to start in 2020 because there's no summary and no cover and nothing seems to have said anything but at least we have this one coming out so I know um it's a Navajo owned voices which again indigenous rep is not something that is very common even nowadays so I'm really excited it's just like monster slaying protecting your home and I love that Rick Riordan is an ally and publishing this sort of stuff. One of my older arcs I am finally going to be picking up Heroin by Mindy McGinnis just because like right now as I'm like putting together my list I was like am I okay to be hurt because that's just what Mindy McGinnis does and I was like yeah I think I can take hurt. So um <laughs> I'm finally going to be reading Heroin by Mindy McGinnis. I tried to get this a few times when because uh, my audiobook uh, my library has the audiobook and then every time I was like okay it's available I'll go uh, I'll borrow it next week when like I'll have because you get it for three weeks so I was like that'll give me enough time to read it in the next TBR and then I'd go for it and suddenly there was like four people and I was like how are where did you people come from so finally I have it borrowed so I'm gonna listen along the audiobook and read along with my arc and I'm very excited I'm also going to be picking up Shadow Frost by Coco Ma first of all I love that author's name but she's also uh Canadian based I believe yeah she's Chinese Canadian um so we're getting at least Chinese somewhat um oh, voices here um I they did a box of it in um for Indigo and I think in the month of November or October and I just didn't get it cause just I didn't hear any reviews like no one seemed to have gotten an arc I don't know what the heck happened in there but like it sounds really cool in the kingdom of Exaria a darkness rises some call it a monster laying waste to the village and their homes some say it is an involved in the world demon summoned from the deepest abyss of the immortal realm many soldiers of the royal guard are sent out to hunt it down and none have ever returned um and I know there's like the princess of Exaria or whatever how are we say it so I'm really excited to read this I have really high hopes it's supposed to be a trilogy I enjoy this cover I like the title I think they released the, the title for the sequel hopefully I enjoy it because this is one that I'd like to promote and read Canadian authors as well as diverse authors this is Chinese Canadian so I would probably be interested in picking that up 
my own copy if it's good. I'm super curious about It Will Fall by Sarah Harian, so I finally, um, I was debating between buying it and then like, again, didn't hear a ton of reviews and then the reviews I heard were like, I thought this is going to be multiple POVs and it wasn't, so I'm kind of angry, so I just rated it three stars and I was like, I don't remember seeing anywhere that it was supposed to have like 14 POVs, I just remember saying there was a bunch of characters. I don't... Which is also funny because like people were hating on There Will Come a Darkness because there were too many POVs. <laughs> um, 17 year old Larkin is an empath born with the ability to sense emotions of others and siphon them um, to either conjure or destroy. But magic is illegal in Demora, so most of her life her powers have been repressed um, by Queen Malaya's harsh edicts and stifling presence in the luminous metal. Yet, when Demina falls prey to an ancient evil lurking below the surface, Queen Malay calls on Larkin and seven other outlaws to save the kingdom. Descending into an underground realm of unspeakable horrors, Larkin and her party must use their forbidden magic to survive. What lies um, in, in wait, um, as Larkin battles for her life, she finds the light in Amis, a notorious felon with a shadowed past, and begins, and begins to come into her own magic. I'm curious because it's supposed to be more horror leaning and it is blurred by Madeline Rue. I really liked Madeline Rue's House of Furies book that I read. Um, I like that we're kind of starting to like test the waters more with horror in YA. So I'm really curious about this. I hope I enjoy it. Um, as long as there's no clowns popping out, I'm okay, I think, with horror novels. So I'm really, really curious about this one. I've owned this book for like a year and still haven't gotten to it. And the sequel has come out or is about to come out. Um, Heart of Thorns by Brie Barton. Trust your heart even if it kills you. Um, it's supposed to be like a feminist retelling. Um, Mia Rose wants only one thing, revenge against the against the Gwine, Gwine Ranch who killed her mother. In a world where only women can possess magic and every woman is suspected of having it, the half-girl, half-god, Gwynich are feared, rivaled, and hunted. After training under her father, the infamous Hunters, Mia is determined to scour the Four Kingdoms to enact the Hunter's Creed, heart for a heart, life for a life. But then her father announces quite different future, she will marry Prince Quinn, which, yeah, that always goes well. So I'm really curious about this one. I remember hearing, not everyone read it, but I remember the people who did read it were like, I liked this. I liked this a lot. So I'm really excited to read this and hopefully enjoy it because I really like the sequel cover too. So I would have a reason to buy it. I also am going to finally read Beyond a Darkened Shore by Jess Kalik. I have this, the arc to the her other standalone, which is somehow not a sequel, despite the fact that they have the same color, cover theme. That is the weirdest situation I've ever seen from a publisher. Um, I remember it's supposed to have like kind of Viking, Viking, Viking or Nordic-y kind of influences. The ancient lands of um, Emerin is mirrored in war. I remember why I didn't read this. Um, because it's supposed to have a bunch of um, Nordic influences, there are a bunch of names, even when I was like reading the summary, that I was like, I can't pronounce that. So I was waiting for an audiobook, and I think the audiobook is finally available. Uh, with her intimidating ability to control enemies' minds and actions, Sierra has managed to keep her people safe, but lately a mysterious crow has been appearing to Sierra, um, whispering warnings of an even darker threat. Although her clansmen dismiss her visions as superstition, she fears that coming evil will destroy not just... Um, her community but the entire world it isn't until sierra captures leave a young northern man leader during her failed siege of my that she discovers she's not the only one who has prophetic visions leaf is sierra's enemy but together they can uh, be the ones who save the world it sounds a little bit like maybe potentially it's going to have a lot of parallels to sky in the deep which with the nordic and like enemies and potential kind of lovers situation there i'm really excited for that i'm going to be reading mr max two and three i read the book of the lost things I think it is book one in December and just loved it so book two is the book of secrets and book three is the book of kings I'm excited I hope we find Mr. Max family and I'm curious for all of the other detective stuff that we're gonna see him doing because it was quite fun and whimsical and just really enjoyable I'm also going to be picking up Shadow Scent different from Shadow Frost um by PM Freestone um I love the UK cover I like the US cover too this one but I loved the UK cover I was kind of sad when they changed it um but per, uh, perfume is power secret or deadly betrayal is paid for in blood um they released the cover for the sequel the UK sequel too which I'm excited for ignite your senses Raquel is an uncanny gift for fragrances but even in a world where scent is linked to prestige um her skills aren't enough to save her dying father Ash bears the tattoos of an imperial bodyguard and is duty bound to join his prince Nisei Nisai on a dangerous mission. It's a challenge protecting Nisai on the road, but it's even harder for Ash to conceal the secrets that could be get him executed. Raquel and Ash have nothing in common until they find themselves framed for a shocking crime, 
poisoning the prince. They flee the city, take on desperate journey to search for a legendary antidote in order to save the prince, clear their names, and they'll have to decipher clues and beat their own demons before the Imperial Army hunts them down. It sounds fantastic. And I'm kind of surprised it's published in Canada by Scholastics. And they did like, even though I like the UK cover more, like, their, mel their hardcover YA releases have had really nice covers. Like, The Candle and the Flame was another one that I was like, are you sure this is from Scholastics? They normally just have like a stock photo of a kid bouncing a ball on their cover. So I'm really excited for this. And like, no one has read it. I'm so frustrated. I haven't heard any reviews for it. So I'm finally like, this is the month where I'm going to read everything with the word shadow in it, apparently. Um, so I'm really excited to read this. I don't know why I'm throwing it at you, but I am going to be reading my Athena's Club series. I think that's it's like the great something Athena's Club, but the Athena's Club. Um, the Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughters, book one. It'll be a reread for me. Um, the European Travel for the Monstrous Gentlewoman is book two. Another reread for me. And then the book three that just came out in September, I think the sinister mystery of the mesmerizing girl i absolutely loved books one and two book two looks very intimidating i know it's really not it's pretty steadily paced and lots happens in it so i'm so excited for this because like i'm just curious to see how this is all gonna wrap up but like lots of fictional characters have offsprings and all those fictional characters are kind of psychotic doing like morally gray i guess is the nice way of putting them um experiments and the girls are like having none of it and gonna try and save everything. I love it and I love the inclusion of Sherlock Holmes. So I'm really excited to to read this series. I think those are all the books that I'm hoping to get to in this month. Um, goal is to get through um, anything that's not a reread, right? Yeah, it's my first time reading it um, and then deal with the rereads. So that is the game plan. Let me know in the comment section down below what you plan on reading this month, if you've read any of these and what you thought of them especially if they were one where it was like no one seems to have said anything about them um i'm very curious to know what you think so i will link all of these books in the description box down below i will also link all of my social media if you follow me i will follow you back and have a happy and safe holidays